This is a presentation on Street Artist Shepherd Ferry. Uh, you may recognize this logo, uh, it's pretty popular. Uh, this is what's known as his street tag. Um, a lot of times street artists will uh, tag buildings or train cars. Uh, it's kind of a symbolic gesture of the artist. And this happens to be Shepherd Ferry's tag. If you look at the image closely, this is act an actual picture of a man named Andre the Giant, who was a famous professional wrestler uh, back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. He's also the big giant that's in the movie The Princess Bride. So Shepard Ferry was born in Charleston, South Carolina. He grew up liking skateboarding, punk rock, and drawing. He now lives in Los Angeles and is a famous artist, probably making a lot of money. Some of his artwork uh, most of his artwork contains a message, a visual message, revolving around politics, rebellion, advertising, war, and peace. And let's take a look at a few. So this one here looks like uh, some people holding up some uh, war weapons. Um, as you can see, there's flowers that are stuffed inside the uh, barrel of the guns. Uh, this brings back a famous image from the 1960s Vietnam War era where uh, the National Guard was stationed outside of the White House in Washington, D.C., um, where they were trying to protect the White House from a bunch of protesters. And there's a famous iconic photograph of a protester who is holding a bunch of flowers in his hand, and he's stuffing a flower inside one of the barrel of the National Guardsmen. Here's another image, sort of anti-war. Instead of dropping bombs, why don't we drop sneakers? poorer countries. His work can be seen in art galleries, but it's also visible, visible as graffiti in some major cities. Here's an example of a, a graffiti mural uh, that he posted on a wall. Notice the size of the mural. There's a guy here with his doggy. Uh, it's pretty large. These are actual um, large pieces of printed out paper that he is um, gluing onto the wall in sort of a collage fashion. Here is a picture of Shepard Ferry in his studio uh, where he's working on some of his canvas paintings. Um, again, he uses a lot of stencils. You can see stencil right here laying on the ground where he's actually cut out the image and then he sprays spray paint so that it reveals uh, the positive image. It's like Jimi Hendrix back here. Muhammad Ali, possibly Johnny Cash. And here he is in front of uh, one of his murals in, uh, on the side of a building. Again, uh, this is normally like a collaged mural. So you can see this bucket down here. It has what we call wallpaper paste in it. And he has this giant brush. And he basically glues the, wall, the, the, the mural onto the brick wall and then adds a layer of wallpaper paste over it to hold it onto the brick wall. And the artwork that brought him worldwide fame, I'm sure you all have seen it. The Hope Poster of President Obama. Some other artwork that he's done, he's been, uh, since the success of the Obama poster, he's been asked to uh, uh, render some celebrities. Um, here's an example, this is Muhammad Ali. Notice he's got a nice textured background. Um, face is rather large. If you look here, you can see his tag. So that's his Andre the Giant tag, the um, way he signed his artwork. Here's one of uh, Lance Armstrong back before he got in big trouble. Again, it was promoting uh, the Lance Armstrong fa Foundation. Here's one uh, for the TV series Dexter. Uh, again, you can tell it's Shepard Ferry's work because of this thing right here, which is his tag. The version of Kobe Bryant. And a version of Michael Jordan. So one of the things I want to talk about is how Shepard Ferry uh, creates his faces. He does what's called posterizing. And basically, this is the picture that he used for President Obama's uh, artwork. What posterizing is, is where you break um, the values of the face into shapes. So if I look at 
the highlight of Mr. Obama's forehead here, you can see that it forms kind of a shape, and that's the same shape that we have right here. So Shepard Ferry breaks the values down uh, into shapes so that he can cut stencils and spray paint uh, the color within those stencils. Some graphic images of the past. Uh, this is a famous drawing um, by Leroy Neiman of uh, an actor or director named Woody Allen. Um, if you notice the thick black lines um, and stark contrast, this, this image is, it was easily able to be printed if need be. Here's a picture of a famous uh, pitcher named Don Drysdale. Um, the reason I'm showing you this is just to show you that all of the values of the shirt and pants and glove and face, they're all broken down into chunks or shapes of color. Here's a p famous picture of Marilyn Monroe done by Andy Warhol. Um, you can see how he used a big chunk of yellow to draw the shape of her hair. And then he's got the blue... Uh, sort of eye makeup up here, and then one big chunk for the face and one chunk for the red lips. Uh, he then probably had a separate stencil or screen where he screen, screen printed the navy blue or black over top of all of those. And another picture of Muhammad Ali, done by Andy Warhol. So to post drives, you want to find an image. I am using Dwight Schrute from the TV show The Office. Uh, in an editing software, I use Photoshop. There are a lot of free editing softwares online where you can do this. Um, but basically, I put a, a grayscale filter, a posterized filter, and a stylized filter, and this was the result. So I broke his real facial features down into shapes where I have white highlights, gray values, and black shadows. Pretty impressive. After poster, posterizing a reference image, Shepard Ferry cuts large stencils to separate the values of the face. He then paints in the various values onto canvases or walls. Here's an example of Shepard Ferry at Kinko's printing out some large stencils. And you can see that he's trimming off the white areas uh, or black, cutting out the black areas so that he can then apply paint within those stencils. Here's a stencil of his, one of his tags. And here he is using sort of a texture stencil, a pattern stencil, where he sprays um, to reveal a sort of a pattern or texture on the, the, the wall. And another one of his works, sort of a collage format, LL Cool J, famous rapper who's now an actor. I don't know, NCIS maybe. Here's a video that shows Shepard Ferry uh, in his process.
All right, I think my ears are bleeding. Uh, you, me, and Shepherd Fairy. Basically, what you're going to do is I have uh, provided a list of reference images of famous celebrities uh, as stencils. Uh, you're going to pick one of these images. And what we're going to do is we're going to create three different stencils. So I chose the stencil of Salvador Dali. And you can see that um, all of the black shapes um, are connected for the most part, and all of the white shapes have to be connected. That's what's important is that all of the white is connected. I'm going to cut three stencils. The first stencil, I'm just cutting a square or a rectangle out around the face. Uh, the second stencil is I'm cutting what I call a profile out. So I'm cutting all around what I believe his profile is, all around the black area. And then the third stencil that we're cutting out is a detailed stencil where I'm just cutting just the black part of the stencil out. So all the white is still stuck together. This is going to be our detail stencil that we'll use last that will make the image pop off the paper. We're going to use texture plates um, to give our background some texture, much in the way that Shepard Fairey uses his patterned, uh, uh, patterned stencils. And this is kind of a finished example here. Uh, I'm going to show you some uh, pastel techniques to get some of these effects. Uh, but the main image here is a silk screw, or a stencil portrait of Salvador Dali. And background, we have a lot of texture. We have a lot of uh, color flashes, a lot of color fades. Looks pretty cool. Here's a couple other examples. This is one of Michael Jordan. This is actually a two stencil. Um, illustration. One stencil for the white and one stencil for the black. And here's one of John Lennon, another two stencil uh, project. Again, pattern background. We got pastel accents all around. Visual assessment rubric. Uh, this is an example of a project that does not meet expectations. If we look at the background texture, it's very sloppy, very poor. It's hard to even tell if there's a texture back there. Uh, the silhouette cuts of the stencil weren't very accurate because it's hard to tell who this person is. Um, the outlining is very erratic. If we look at the outline around the picture, a ruler was not used. It just doesn't look very clean. And the pastel accents are very blotchy. Um, it's very hard to tell what they are. So this does not meet expectations. Here's an example of a project that does meet or exceed expectations. Notice the background texture, how it's nice and neat and clean. We can see what it is. Um, the cuts are very nice and even and neat. We can actually tell that this is a picture of Bob Marley. Um, good silhouette. The outlining, uh, black lines that are around the image are very crisp and clean, even thickness. The ruler was used. Uh, if we look at the pastel accents, you can see a nice glow around here in yellow. You can see some lines that are streaking across the background. Even the pastel glow around the outside of the silhouette is very nicely blended. So this project meets or exceeds expectations. This is the goal. Here's an example of the uh, grading rubric that I'll be using. Get them checking cutting accuracy. You want to take your time on this. I'm going to demonstrate this uh, for you in a little bit. You want to try to pick some kind of a color scheme uh, to create contrast. Backgrounds need to have uh, texture and they also need to have some pastel accents. Um, grading readability this should look like your celebrity when you're finished. And as always, craftsmanship is how neat and well you use the art materials. Okay, this is how we're going to create stencils. So I have a picture of LeBron James. And behind it I have three pieces of drawing paper that are somewhat thick. They're a lot thicker than computer paper. We're going to use all three of these sheets. So what we need to do is be able to get LeBron James' face on all of our stencils. Uh, to this we're going to use the transfer process. So basically you want to put pencil uh, pretty thick all over the back of the image.
once we have the pencil on the back of the image, we are going to lay it down so that the uh, pencil is facing down on the white drawing paper. We want to try to align the edges. Should be exact here. And we're going to create the first stencil by just marking the corners with little 90 degree angles. So those corner marks should transfer through. We're going to take a ruler and we're going to go ahead and connect those 90 degree marks to make our first stencil. So this is stencil number one. Basically it's going to help us block out an image where we're going to be able to put the face. I'm going to go ahead and mark it twice inside the rectangle and at the top. Stencil number two is just going to focus on just the profile or the outside edge of the head. So we're not doing anything on the inside, it's just the outside. So I'm tracing the outside here. Some of the lines do not connect, so we'll have to just kind of make those up as we go, like around his eye and his cheek here. I'm just kind of making that up and trying to connect things. Uh, it goes around his jersey and then down around his shoulder. Go ahead and go all the way across the bottom. And we're going to go up the side here, make, make his, his neck that kind of runs into his shoulder there. And we're going to go about his jaw and then draw his ear. And connect his headband and finish it off with the head. So again, it's just the outside of the head. Nothing on the inside. Check and make sure it transferred through, and it did. I'm going to go ahead and mark the corners again. And take our pencil and go ahead and um, kind of retrace the line just so they're a little bit more visible. So this is stencil number two. So it's just the outside of the head. That's all we need. Kind of, kind of like a silhouette. All right, and then stencil three is going to be our last stencil, and this one's going to involve um, you making sure that you're pretty accurate with your transferring. And for this one, we're just transferring all of the black shapes. So everything that's black on here, we want to outline it and transfer it. Because these are the shapes that are going to make up the details of the face um, when we go to add color in with our stencils. Make sure it transferred. And now I'm just kind of going back over my lines so that I can see them a little bit better. Looks pretty good. So this is just the black shapes. Stencil number three. Okay, so I want to put registration marks on all of these stencils. So I'm measuring over from the left side every four inches, putting a mark at the top and bottom, and drawing a straight line through. And registration marks are uh, marks that are going to allow us to keep all of our stencils aligned when we um, place these in three different phases. So again, in stencil number two, I'm measuring four inches over, drawing a line. Same thing for stencil three. So all of them are the same. Exacto knife. We're going to be using exacto knives to cut our stencils out. You can notice that there's a little shiny stripe on the left side here that kind of angles down. That's the blade. It's very sharp. And when we use these, we want to hold them just like a pencil. And we're trying to make the blade face down, and we're cutting with just the tip of the knife. Exacto knives are, are, are nice to use when you're trying to get exact cuts, thus the name Exacto knife. So here's just a scrap sheet of paper. I'm just trying to show you how I hold it. 
Um, notice I'm cutting away from my left hand. I'm cutting away from my fingers so there's no risk of me cutting myself. Again, I'm just pulling from left to right. I'm turning my paper as I go to make small cuts. It's not one long cut, it's, they're all small, short cuts. My knife should always be cutting from left to right if I'm right-handed and right to left if I'm left-handed. And then give you kind of an idea here as to how detailed you can get with these cuts. You can cut out a lot of small shapes. I want to make sure that when you're cutting you have a cutting mat. That's what that nice green board is. So stencil one, all that we need to cut out on stencil one is just the rectangle. So I'm going to take a ruler. I want to make sure I have a nice neat cut and make sure my fingers are out of the way. And again, I'm just trying to use the tip of the knife to cut on the line. I'm going to go ahead and turn my paper so that I'm always cutting the same direction. And this is stencil number one. We want to keep both of these pieces. That's why they're both labeled stencil one. Stencil number two, again, it's just the profile or the silhouette of the head. So I'm just cutting around the outside of the head. And take our knife and find a starting point. I'm going to go ahead and cut the straight lines first. If your paper starts to shred or frill, that means your blade is dull and you need a new blade. On these detail cuts, notice I'm taking short, small cuts. My strokes don't have to be very long. It's not one continuous cut. And as I'm cutting, I'm turning the paper so that I'm constantly cutting the same direction. So cut and turn, cut and turn. Take your time, it's not a race. Again, we're trying to make this accurate and detailed. And now we have two pieces for stencil number two. They're both labeled. I want to make sure we keep both pieces. And lastly, stencil three. Uh, this is the detail. We just want to cut out all of the black shapes. If it helps to keep the reference image next to you so that you know what to cut out, you can do that. Um, but we're only cutting out the black shapes only. So find a starting point and again, small cuts. Turn your paper as you go. You want to cut the same direction. This will ensure that you're safe. We do not keep, need to keep all of the little tiny pieces that you cut out. You can throw those away. And here is the end result. So all of the black shapes have been cut out. It's nice and detailed. Looks like LeBron James. Okay, we're going to show you how to put your stencils to use here. Uh, so what I have here is stencil number one and I have a green sheet of construction paper. I also have a texture plate. I'm going to take a little piece of tape and I'm going to put it on the back of the center part of stencil number one, so the middle cutout part. It's just one little piece of tape just to hold it down. Notice I have the border around the middle part. I'm going to mark my registration marks here. So I'm lining up the line and I'm just adding a little T so that I know where those marks are. I'm going to pull the background off and next I'm ready to add texture to the background. So I'm using a texture plate. I'm placing it behind my construction paper and now I'm going to take a uh, color pencil. Um, any color that you want. I'm going to use purple and I'm going to start to do to apply the pencil with a pretty firm pressure and you can notice that the texture starts to show through. If you keep your pencil strokes really close together it will make your background appear a lot smoother. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. 
You're going to have to move your texture plates down so they can get across your entire paper. You're also going to notice that stencil number one is blocking out a rectangle that's right in the center of the paper. As you can imagine, that's where we're going to put our celebrity portrait, is in the center. So it's blocking that out. Once you have your background uh, pattern and texture, we're going to go ahead and start adding pastel accents with chalk pastel. I have some just computer paper here, and I'm going to show you uh, if I apply some chalk pastel to the edge and place it and blend it out, I can create sort of stripes or lines within the background. Again, I'm just using scrap paper. And you can place these lines in whatever fashion you want, stripes, you can do a radial pattern, however you want to do this. Another technique is you can take and tear the scrap paper so that it has some curves on it. And if I take some colors here, oh, well, need to add a little bit more. If I move the uh, cut paper down slightly and add a different color, I can start to create some repetition or some patterned lines or stripes within my background. Maybe I'll add some black here. Again, you can see how this line sort of repeats itself. Another technique you can use in the backgrounds, uh, pastel accents, is you can create positive and negative shapes. Uh, this could be in the form of letters or symbols. Um, I'm just going to do a, just a simple block L here for LeBron, just to give you an idea of what this looks like. So if I take the, this, image, this sheet of paper, I can place it on my background. I'm going to put pastel all around it and blend it inside the actual cutout. So this creates a positive shape of an L. I can also take the piece that I cut out, place it somewhere on here, and I can create the, uh, the, the negative shape of an L by blending outwards. So those are some nice options for your backgrounds and your pastel accents. Uh, if you would like to Put a little pastel on your stencil you can do that or you could use the scrap paper along the edge but this is kind of going to give it kind of a halo or a faded border around where the portrait's going to go just to kind of help it pop out away from the busy background and once you're finished with your pastel accents you can take off your stencil just be gentle so the paper doesn't tear and you're ready to move on So stencil number two, we want to take and we want to put the big piece on and line it up with our registration marks, our little T's. Make sure it's lined up there. And then we're going to take a piece of tape. And as you can probably guess, we're going to place the center part of stencil two inside the frame here to line it up. We can go ahead and remove the back part. And now we're going to focus in on the negative space around the head. You could use a texture plate there if you want in a different color. Uh, or you can add some more pastel accents. Really, it's up to you. I'm going to try to take and fade some of this in from the outside edge to give it sort of a feathered look, feathered border. Again, your options, you can use texture plates or you can put pastel accents back here. I'm going to go ahead and take a green and actually apply it on my stencil, or you could use the scrap paper. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and fade some green out around to give him kind of a green halo. I'm thinking about color scheme. Most of the colors I have on here are cool colors, blues and greens and purples and black. The color scheme is up to you. Once you're finished, go ahead and take that off and you're ready for stencil three. Go. 
All right, for stencil number three, you're gonna need your background and stencil number three, and you're gonna come back here to the spray booth. Basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay your background image in the spray booth. You're gonna take a couple slices of these newsprint paper, and you wanna place it so that it covers your background, but exposes the area where your face is going to go. We're gonna put that in there like this. And I like that. Then you're going to take your stencil, stencil number three, and you're trying to line this up. You want to line it up so that it's uh, slightly overlapping or just showing the green paper, the green area. We lay that on there. We're going to turn on the uh, vent here. It's going to be kind of loud. Take some spray paint. Shake her up. We're going to spray the spray paint onto our paper. Don't want to spray too much because you don't want it to be runny. Once you're done, you can lift your stencil number three off of here. Booyah! We got LeBron James. Take off these. And then the last step is we'll trim this work so that it's nice and neat. We can cut off these rough edges. Boom! Shepherd Fairy Celebrity Stencils. All right, so here's the final result. Pretty cool. Here's some student work. Notice a nice smooth background and pastel accents. This is Bob Marley. Here's one of Marilyn Monroe. Pretty cool. Nice halo around her head. Walter White. Notice how the pastel accents form a diamond. That's someone thinking outside the box. This is one of Pink. Notice the multicolored background uh, texture plate color pencil application and the radial pattern of the accents and little Wayne notice the positive and negative stars in the background pretty cool stuff